Hey, wild players. I am Lotus Knight, your stream op for tonight. And I am proud to bring you tonight's episode of Weldin' Out. Marty, take him away. Thank you so much, Lotus. Well, this time, though, we have a full house on Weldin' Out. Uh, normally, every other week, um, these weeks, uh, we have Tom Carter and Fish joining. But Fish couldn't make it, so instead of getting one sub, we got two. We have Seth on and our special guest, Corbett's. Tom, let's start with you. How are you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing perfectly. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Did you Go say ahead. Corb or Tom? Tom. Tom. Oh, Tom. Tom yeah, Corb. No, I'm. I'm. I'm doing perfectly fine. And yeah, please, Corb. Like, how are you doing? Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the miscommunication. Time takes a while. Uh, you know, sound takes a while to get here uh, all the way in Australia. This, you know, gets distorted. Um, but no, very, very thankful to, you know, be on the show here with you guys. Very nice of you to invite a standard player like myself on, uh, to talk about Wild. Don't worry, and, I'm secretly a standard player too. And Seth, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Excellent. So, how do we start, Marty? Oh, we have a lot. And, uh, as always, we're gonna start with Player of the Week. Tom, you have our Wild NA Player of the Week, and this guy is uh, pretty close to you. Can you tell us who it is? It is none other than Sharip. Uh, fun fact, he's the guy that actually helped me get uh, White Legend for the first time ever. Um, I'm really happy he got Player of the Week. He took down the powerhouse that is Maxi Bon on a 3-3... 3-0 sweep, and he helped our team, Pog Merchants, narrow the win 13-10, so exactly the amount of points we needed, and that keeps us uh, within striking distance of the playoff spot. We are actually really close. Uh, we need a strong performance in the final week to pull it off, but I think that if we, give, we get more showings like this, our odds look really good. So, congratulations, Sharip, on getting Player of the Week. Congratulations, indeed. Now, for EU, Seth, who do we have? For EU, we've got Otters, who had a pretty tall task going against everyone's a winner last week. Starting his match, the score was 8-7 to seven with the top two seeds left to play. And Otters had a chance to clinch the week, but only with a sway, excuse me, only with a sweep over Maxadonna, a top player on EU ladder. Our player of the week, Otters, stepped up to the plate and achieved exactly that, going undefeated in the EU series last week and taking the win for Goku number one. Congratulations, Congratulations to Otters. Congratulations to Otters, sure. indeed. All right. Well, with that said, we still have a lot to talk about. So let's go to the meta overview. Bringing up the chart. Thank you, Lotus. Taking a look at this, uh, Demon Hunter saw a bit of a resurgence. I'm going to point out the special archetype here, the Elfie Delphi Demon Hunter. So Elfie's goal this season was to make a deck that I could not uh, categorize. Okay, And you would think this is pretty easy because you just stuff a bunch of bad cards and call a day but it's really not that simple you have to make it as anti-synergistic and random as possible where the cards just don't make sense together and it took almost all season but elfie finally did it and hats off to her i had to congratulate her with her own archetype so elfie delphi demon hunter it is beyond that uh we see some increases in hunter and mage a uh, few unusual archetypes in those as well. So we see Beast Hunter, 10 Even Hunters. That's the most we've seen all season long in a week. And primarily Ignite Mage. We also see an uptick in Waker Mages as well. Moving beyond Wait. that, Priest. What? Yes? What is Mind Blast Priest? Mind Blast Priest. So that is the old, um, it's an older deck. Basically, you curve out to Anduin, 
and then you kill them with Anduin pings and mind blasts. Oh. Mm hmm. So it used to be based around dragons. Don't remember if this one was, but it was primarily control deck. Not the Reno type, just get to Anduin, chip away some health, and then kill them with mind blasts. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Priest saw a huge drop. Uh, 11 fewer brings this week. Rogue, only two more brings than last week. Shaman and Warrior, both falling slightly. Uh, six fewer brings each for them, and Warlock having five more brings. Seeing a lot of even Warlock, some even Reno Warlock, and then a bunch of different archetypes beside those. What is... Is, th is that correct? I see Seed Warlock in the list. <laughs> that that's that um, that must be an error. Perhaps someone rolled over a second or third time. I I don't know. I believe they did. Oh, that's a tragic. If I remember right. Mm hmm. He really was. Yeah. So I I I was going to be so mad if somehow someone got to play Seed Luck, unlike DHL. I mean, <laughs> imagining no, it's not getting insta banned. But like, uh, it was super, super unfortunate. But they did roll over once again, so that means they had to play with a zero mana one one of their opponent's choice. Hopefully, they didn't pick Snowflipper Penguin or Murloc Tiny Pin, because I don't know about you guys, but I can't kill those. I don't want to give my. Opponent I think that I much think you make you you make you make the opponent watch you kill them for the psychological damage. That's where you get yeah. the edge. No, you need to pick the the penguin is cuter than the than the Morlock. Sorry, not sorry. I can That's get behind so that. Controversial. I, the penguin is much cuter, especially golden. Especially uh, with I the new animation the... and the and the sound. See, for me, I give him the death skimp. I say you got to deal with this ugly little guy in your hand and deck, and he's gonna get his cooties all over the rest of your cards, and that's your problem, not mine. And usually, just seeing that little guy in your hand is enough to turn you off. Yeah, but at least he has the demon tag. Like you can do, maybe you get something out of it. I don't know. Oh, you're yeah. right. The sacrificial pack synergy is a problem. I guess you yeah, don't. You feel then. you feel you feel less bad because at least it's the demon. You know, it's on theme with warlock. But if you give him yeah. a penguin, that's like, what am I supposed to do with this cutie? Yeah, you do have a point. Well, with that said, we have more decks to discuss. And uh, let's go back to the main screen for this. The first one is from Praise Chicken Jumpstick, uh, PCDS, more commonly known as. And it's a spicy aggro Reno Hunter list. So, taking a look, it's a super low curve. Um, only three fives, and they're all pretty aggressive for the most part. Uh, Sans Polkel and Polkel just tutors the one of the best cards in the list, Dino Tamer Brand. Uh, what do you guys make of this? Thank Court? God it was unbanned. Oh, um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I want to hear from you what you think of this because I oh, know you've uh, I really like this... with the archetype. Yeah, I really like this general direction for like a deck like Reno Hunter. Uh, man, it's been a long time though since I've uh. <laughs> Since I've really been brave enough to try try something like this. Um, but yeah, I like the general direction. I do wonder in a deck like this, like, is Kazakas even better than Rindling's Rifle? I don't know, it's kind of close. But I can definitely see uh, something like this doing okay if you're expecting things like Mage, right? You still have the Flare and the Zeph, that's like double secret, uh, you know, disruption and you're putting on a lot of pressure. Um, you're still probably putting on a fair amount of over-the-top damage against things like, I don't know, like Warlock. And so, yeah, I don't know. Um, Reno decks, uh, I think that they're generally just better when they're kind of built like this. Very proactive and aggressive uh, if they don't have great control tools. So, yeah, this is pretty spicy. Yeah, I think I would agree. I don't know. I think that bringing Rifle is not the card you want to see in this list because it runs enough secrets. So if you have secrets up and you swing with a weapon, you might get something you actually don't want to. I think Asakas is really strong. I think it's better. You could be right, yeah. though. 
the, the one thing, or the two things you have to consider is the horn bow is anti-synergistic with um, the rifle. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of canceling it out with the eagle horn, but you're also sacrificing dragon bane by running Kazakus. And the dragon bane can be really good if you can connect that five damage to face. So True. some positives, uh, some negatives. Yeah, but if you look at the deck, I don't know. I like how uh, Drumstick made it so it's like really cheap and it has like a really top end with Polket and that's basically it, right? It doesn't have like Sulshin or all these expensive cards in the end. Uh, the 10 mana spells that, uh, what is the name? Stampeding something. The Grand Slam. The Grand Slam, right? So it doesn't <laughs> run that that expensive cards. It's really cheap. So I think running Kasakas in a cheap deck is is always the right call. I mean, it is true that as a wild arena deck, you have to play a copy of Kazakas to be viable. Um, and so you yeah, we right. have to play this version, right? Yeah, you would be correct. Uh, with that. We do have another deck to talk about, and uh, this is special to a uh, a fellow caster here tonight. Seth, this is your deck, so you want to tell us about the tech buff paladin? You guys can't see it, but I've got a big old grin on my face, because this deck is <laughs> like the worst pile of cards you've ever seen in your life. But nobody said bad tech didn't win games, and robes of, curving robes of protection in the Cobalt Monk just so happens to beat a couple of really good decks like Odd Hunter and Ignite Mage. I mean, there's a lot of cards in this deck. And sure, it's called Tech Buff because there's a hand buff shell. But really, it's just Draw Simulator until you draw those two cards. Because that is all this deck is meant to beat. And now, you also course, have could... Call Me a Fight, Rebuke, and Lothar to even destroy Ignite Mage further beyond. Yeah, I forgot to mention, I really hate Ignite Mage. <laughs> like, really hate Ignite Mage. So, two mana, Lotheb. That's a feels good, man. Gives me all the right feelings casting that. Uh, I love this deck. I, I think this is such a good idea for, like, if you want to go that aggressive hard target route, I think that the hand buff pally... It's kind of weird that Pally just has these rebukes, right? Just lying around. It feels very weird for the class, but it's such a great tool when you're going after these archetypes. And, you know, it's such a great hand buff synergy with things like robes and things like monk, just because it makes them so difficult to remove in general. Like, it's one thing to try and get rid of a 2 4 robes and just like rush into it or something with the ignite, uh, what's it called, like the shopkeeper. It's another thing when it's like a 5-7 or something insane. So this is such an interesting sort of version of just a brutal, brutal hard target into those Hunter and Mage uh, types. From yeah, personal like, experience, I... a 7-10 monk is awful hard to remove as <laughs> Ignite Mage with a Robes of Protection on the board. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think this is really good uh, because the other version we see usually of deck paladin is the call to arms with like the same kind of shell but instead mm. of of having all these buffs it runs more cock kind of minions sorry for the word uh with watch post and whatnot but i really like the aggressive way you took because it's better than having a defensive lineup waiting for your opponent to just give up when this can just swing, as you said, a 710 monk to the face, if you want to. Yeah, I, I think the word we're really all looking for with uh, describing this deck is uh, Tech W. There's really no way to put it otherwise. I know a lot of people use that to describe Cobalt Sticky Fingers, but um, you do have Cobalt Monk, and that's close enough. It is oh. always the kobolds. It is always the goddamn kobolds. <laughs> yeah, they always seem to find a way. 
with that, we have a lot still to cover. So let's move on to match recaps. Uh, first up in the Brown Conference, Seth, tell us about the Brown Conference standings right now. All right. So in Brown Conference standings, there's, you know, a couple big dogs at the top. They put a pretty big gap between the rest of us. So Aussie Pain Merchants and everyone's a winner sitting at 133 points apiece. And then there's a 20 point gap to the next team sitting with 113, no fin two. And right on their tail is the Pog Merchants with 111 in the four seed. And then they are followed by Bash Bros, Man Crooks Revenge, and WTF with 100 points, 97 points, and 90 points respectively. Now, for our viewers, um, the thing to take into account here, the top three teams are guaranteed a playoff spot. Beyond that, it is the next two teams between both conferences that have the most points. So right now, Nofin2 is in the top three spot and has that playoff spot. The Pog Merchants are right behind. Uh, we'll take a look at the green conference later and discuss how the four and five or yes the how the seventh and eighth playoff spots are looking with that said Yo. um um we have the pog merchants your team versus aussie pain merchants uh we were talking about charms matchup earlier against maxi bond can you tell us about the rest of course. So in the first seed, we have Martian Boo mm -hmm. against Bone Musher, 3-1 for Martian. Uh, then we have Slight, uh, who was actually 7-0. Uh, no, sorry, he was 6-1. Sorry, sometimes looking at these tables, I get so much uh, confused. He took another sweep against Calibrine. Uh, here he is now 7 1. That's it. So, Chari, player of the week on the third seed, he got a sweep against Maxibon, who was rank one back then. I think he's rank one once again. Sorry, Seth. And <laughs> then we have myself losing against Quecklord. Uh, he won 3 1 against me. Then we have Tus uh, 3 1 against Iorari in the fifth seed. So, Can you tell us who subbed in? Uh, who subbed yes. In for? Uh, he subbed in for Anaphalardis, um, who's really busy with schoolwork. So I think that I'm the... Yeah, as of now, I'm the only original player of the Puck Merchants from last season. Everyone else has been replaced. Well then, that is quite the turnover. Yeah. Um, I hope you can keep carrying the ship to playoffs. You're right on no, the cusp. No, no, Martian, Martian is, is the one who's carrying us. Well, Martian at 5-1 and one Yeah, is Martian insane. Is, is such a good player. Like, I'm really happy he he took the place from, from Pace, uh, who's also an excellent player, but Martian Boo immediately, once he replaced uh, Pace, he immediately he took the lead. And I'm really happy for him. What a comeback. Yeah, yep. check out his streams too. Great streamer. We have another match to discuss though. Corb, as our guest, uh, do you want to take this one? Mancrick Revenge versus Bash Bros? Absolutely. So this was a, a very close one where it was a, a three to two in terms of matches, a 13 to nine score. Winning were the Bash Bros, uh, getting their second win of the season of a Man Cricks. Um, in the first seed, we saw Reverb have a 3 1 victory over Sinister Me. Jailstorm got swept by Oddlaw. Uh, Sick Lad uh, got swept by Mr. Python. There was another sweep there with an Ubernator over Lord Zab. And then Praise Chicken Drumstick with that Reno Hunter that we saw earlier with a 3 1 victory over night uh so yeah a relatively close series it's kind of funny though just how one-sided all the individual matches were even though overall it was quite close um and so yeah it, it looks like the lineups it's kind of funny seeing just how much warlock warrior hunter there is across both teams where uh, from what i can see seven of the players brought that exact uh same trifecta um but yeah just a, a nice one there for bash bros to get the second one of the season 
Yeah, definitely a solid win for them, and it just barely keeps their playoff hopes alive. And with that, that covers the Brown Conference. So let's move on to the Green Conference. Tom, tell us about the Green Conference standings. Green Conference. So the main difference between the Green Conference and the Brown Conference is that the top teams have more points on the Green Conference than in the Brown Conference, with F2L Viridian leading the Green Conference with 147 points. Then we have Herkulov with 136, Mad Scientists 122, Meta Drillers with 121. Then we have Owl, Golden Hand, and the Usual Suspects with 117, 84, and 79, respectively. Thank you, Tom. Now, as we discussed, the top three spots from the Green Conference get into the playoffs right now. Mad Scientists is in the third spot with Meta Drillers right behind them at 121 points. But because the final two spots in the playoffs go to the at-large teams in the entire series, right now, Meta Drillers and Owl fall under that with 121 points and 117 points, respectively. So they are actually higher than Nofin 2, the third seed in the Brown Conference. But things can change soon. So the Pong Merchants, so they're fourth in their conference. Their competition right now is either getting past Nofin 2 or past bug. Owl and or Metal Droolers. So very interesting race, very close. It seems lopsided at first, but because of the way things are, it is going to make the race very convoluted and fun to follow. Yeah, when we have when we have two conferences, it makes things a little bit more complicated sometimes for the players or for organization itself. But it does make the playoffs more and more interesting uh, overall with the point differential. Yeah, cross conference as well has also been spicing things up. And one of the big things that changed this too. Uh, Seth, I hate to throw your team under the bus, but you guys got only three points in a cro- cross conference match, and that has really oh, no. turned the uh, playoff expectations on its head, right? So now we have no idea what's going to happen in the Brown Conference. Uh, both teams between No Finn and Pog Merchants could make it. Uh, one is guaranteed in, we don't know who. It's anyone's game. It's a free-for-all. And uh, we'll have to wait and see to know for sure what will happen there. With that said, we have a match that, Seth, I think you'll be wanting to move on to. Can you tell us about your team's week against the Meta Jewelers last week? Yeah, I'd love to. So we were talking about cross-conference matches, and this was a big one for us because... My team and Tom's team are fighting not only for the three seed, but also for the seventh and eighth wild card slots by points. So Meta Droolers is one of those teams that we're neck and neck with. So this week was a big week to win against them. We had Lasagna win 3-1 against Glare, and then Rice Bowl and EPT Hopper both getting a 3-1 win against their opponents. Tigrai losing 3-2 to Godbout. And myself with my beloved tech buff paladin winning 3 1, no way. It was very close. There were lots of nerves, but we are pretty happy with the end result. And that has put spirits pretty high going into this last week of regular yeah. season. This was a much needed win as well. So, congrats to you guys. We do have another team in the playoff race to discuss with the next matchup. Uh, this one is between Hair Club and Owl Come. Corp, <laughs> tell us about it. <laughs> well, Owl uh, managed to pull out a win against the previously undefeated Hair Club. Uh, never underestimate them. So this is a 13-10 victory for Owl. Uh, super close series uh, again 
where they they did actually win uh, 5-1 in the overall matches, but just because of how tight a lot of the matches were and the fact that Otters as the... Um, oh, sorry, this is 3-2. to But uh, just the fact that, like, Otters and Burnt won very decisively, made it very close overall. Uh, we had Possible Hope um, sweeping White Delight. Nice Jewish Owl having a 3-2 over Concerned Mum. Uh, Turtle lost 1-3 uh, to Burnt. Hello uh, got swept by Otters, and then Memnarch for Hair Club got swept by Geranium. So, like you said, this was a super clutch win, uh, picking up the points here to really, really sort of, not solidify, but give them a little bit of an edge in those uh, seven and eighth wildcard slots. If this match had been flipped, for example, and they maybe only picked up 10 points, then the, the race between, like, Pog Merchants and Nofin and Owl would be just so tight right now, but um, yeah, they're they're a little bit out in front. So good job on uh, on outcome. <laughs> Definitely a good job from them. And with that, that covers the Green Conference. So now with the NA series covered, we can move on to PPR. So let's head on over there. Thank you, Lotus. Starting with the Automobile Benchins, bottom of the top, we have Neji Boston, Nice Jewish Owl, Catharsis, Possible Hope with that sweep last week, and Burnt. Then from 10 to 1, we have Labori Sangre, 6 and 2, 21 par, uh, Martian Boo, 23 PAR, White Delight, and Sunday in the 8th and 7th spots. At 25 PAR piece, at number theory at six, slight at five, lasagna coming in with 29 P uh, par at number four. Then we have Battle Tagger and Bone Masher, both six and two, 31 and 32 par respectively. And then all the way, way ahead at eight, no, 44 PAR, none other than our special guest himself, Corbett. Well done. And congrats to that. Thank you. Seems like someone is a little. Pay you that much. Yeah, seems like someone is a little salty though, about a a certain teammate getting MVP last season. Oh yeah, I had to come back with the revenge, you know, like get me out the sort of uh, snipe me out of that one, and uh, you know, just really, really need to uh, take back that one seat decisively. Yeah, I I think you're safe this season. Yeah, I so. think I'm clear. This one, <laughs> I think uh, I think I'm good this time. Everybody's uh. obsessed with the battle tagger lineups, but I think we ought to be stealing the core bet lineups. I mean, I I'll found out careful. that Otters o Otters did say that he just stole my lineup for both EU and NA, and that he said that he went six 0 in the week. So I really counted that as two additional wins for me. Maybe that's what boosted me so far up on the power rankings this time. Hmm. <laughs> Definitely not the twenty dollars you paid out Marty before the show. I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I can't hear you through uh, my money crinkling in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, there you have it. PAR shown for transparency as well, so you can't say I'm like Donde. So with that, let's move to the EU series. First up, we have the standings to cover. Seth, tell us about these six teams and how they're faring. All right, so in EU Wild, we've got a little Agony on top with 139 points, F2L Celadon with 131, Everyone's a Winner with 124, Goku number one with 121, Safari Wild with 103, and Bad Tech Cards with 69. Nice. 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 Oh my god, Corp, you have to say nice too. Why do you have to ruin it for everyone? I shouldn't have had you on here. God. Can I pay you again to redeem this? I'm sorry. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I just got the PayPal notification. Never mind. Carry on. Uh, but yeah, so EU Wild Series still has another week of regular season play after this week. All these teams will make the playoffs. The one thing they are fighting for, though, is the bye week. So the top two teams will get the bye. And the bottom two teams will stake it out to see who moves on to the next round. 
So right now, a I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I'm oh, gonna yes. be honest, Go buddy. I, I just got I just got distracted uh, with the whole nice joke. I was just staring at my team, a little agony at top of leaderboard. I just got lost in their beautiful uh, eyes and points. So that's all. Just a bit of a distraction. I'll have you know, we're coming for you. We're oh, coming boy. for you. I, we have. Uh, I just think. It's a little suspicious that not only is F2L the top in NA Wild, they're almost the top in EU Wild, and both of the players for everyone's winner, or excuse me, F2L on NA are captaining the top two teams. I think you're in cahoots with Dante, but that's just me. I am so lucky that I don't get to play in EU because I don't have the money for another collection. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, this series is a little small, but there's a, a lot of big names from the EU server here. Mm -hmm. So, let's take a look at one of them. We have EU Everyone's a Winner versus Goku number one. Get that up on screen. So, we were just talking about big names and really good players, and that pretty much just describes EU Everyone's a Winner's roster right now. Mr. Luke 98, Max Donna, Adrian, QB, Lasagna. Like, this is basically just everyone's a winner, EU. It's just a bunch of top 50 players, right? All these guys have hit rank one at some point, I believe. So, actually, that's even more impressive than the everyone's a winner in NA, because a certain captain only hit rank two in, on the ladder over there. So, more rank one players on this team. That's fun. But, but there need there is something to be said about them losing fourteen to eleven here against Goku number one. Otter, Shadow Frog, Goku in the four slot. What? Wait, wait. Goku's in the four seed, and the team name is Goku number one. Can we can we discuss this for a second? What's going on there? Do we need to change the team name every week depending on Goku's seed? That's kind of what I'm uh, what I'm hearing. Oh no, that that's going to be such a disaster. We already have enough problems with Owl having such a big name that I cannot know what the last two words of the whole name are. I'm still wondering. Uh, uh yeah, don't, you don't have to look at it. You know, it'll be fun. You don't have to go research exactly what it stands for. Like you can just read them as Owl. Yeah, it's, uh, fine. it's just just Owl. Yeah, just have it's mercy fine. for content, please. <laughs> it's Goku's Bye. number four has a nice ring to it. They're fourth in standings, and Goku's the four seed. I kind of like it. Rolls I mean, that, that tends to tends to bode well for the team as well. If Goku's number four, then the uh, team must be doing pretty okay. Yeah. Another thing to mention, too. Otter is using EU to single-handedly boost himself up in fantasy. Dude's just been winning <laughs> both on NA and EU and after taking himself. And, um... He moved up from like eighth place to like third or second in two weeks. So congrats to him. And that sweep is huge as well for his team. That moves them up to fourth place and fighting for third. So that'll be pretty helpful in trying to figure out who they want to face in the first round of playoffs if they can't get that one or two seed for the bye. But overall, yeah, congrats to them. Very close week, and it'll be fun to watch the next two weeks to see where these teams end up. Um, we have another match though. This is between F2 Celadon and Safari Wild. Now, want to tell us about this? Sure. So in the first seed for F2 L Celadon, we have Itachi, who's actually subbing. I don't know if it's it's permanent, right? As far as I know, so he is in for the next three weeks. Alp is on vacation for the first three weeks of October. Can't play, so Tachi stepped in and will be playing for him in the meantime. Okay, yeah, because I, I know I knew something of the sort. Like it wasn't it wasn't permanent, but it, it was for a long time, kinda. So we have Itachi against uh, Larat, three two for Larat. Then we have Lorthos, who, if I remember correctly, was player of the week earlier this month. No, early last month. Uh, winning against Silosin 3-2. Then we have Red Buffson, 
3-2 against Ramanon Joke. Then we have Bedrims 3-1 against King's Bounty. And last but not least, we have Copa losing 2-3 against Killer Raccoon. Yeah, the final match was extremely close. So yeah, but you guys still, to... still took the win, so... Yeah, I just wanted to shout out Killer Raccoon there, because it was a very close matchup. So, well done to them. So, thanks Tom for covering that. Now we have PPR on the other side of the pond for EU. Let's go on to that page. Corp, we already covered you at the top in PPR in NA. Tell us about the guys in EU now. Absolutely. So as the honorable mentions, uh, we have Slad at 9 PA, uh, Elfie <laughs> with that uh, unique Elfie Delphi lineup with uh, 9 PA as well. Yerna is an honorable mention, 11, Goku, Goku, uh, Goku number honorable mention with uh, Goku number 12, I guess, number 12 with PAR, and Ribobson is the uh, fifth round we mentioned with 14. Now, moving on to the uh, top 10 spots, we have Shadow Frog with 15, The Rotted Zombie, love The Rotted Zombie, with 16 PAR, Otters, who has just been uh, shooting up the, the table, as you mentioned earlier, uh, moving into 8th place with 17, Lasagna at 7 with 19 PAR, Mr. Luke with 20, and then the top 5, we have Lorthos, who is on a six six week streak, I think, uh, for losing his first game. So, twenty one PAR there for Lorthos. Uh, Lorat in fourth. Taunt is cheat at third. Mad Thanos in second place with twenty seven PAR. And then Alb, who is taking the season off basically, or at least the next three weeks. And you know what? He might have secured the top spot for the rest of the season still with forty PAR. For Alb, a huge 13-point gap over second place. Undefeated. What a season. Alb OP. That's all I have to say about that. So, with that, there you have it. PPR. If you want to move up, just win a bit more. Maybe you'll catch up to Alb. Maybe you won't. <laughs> Who knows? Money talks. I won't say how much. But, just you know my PayPal. Says the captain of F2 Viridian. <laughs> just win. It's a good I like I'm more of the classic get good. But yeah, just win works too. Uh, you don't need skill, just win. It's easy. It's a game of luck. Always. But with that, that covers our EU recap. And with both NA and EU done, we're moving back to the main screen for our question of the week. So for those who don't know, we ask a question every week to look ahead or look back in the week, shout out some players, some teams, uh, things to look out for. So this week, the question of the week is, what is the most influential match going into the playoffs? So this is the final week for NA for playoffs start, and I'm curious to hear what everyone thinks is the most influential match going on in the NA series right now. So for me personally, I think it is uh, the match between, um, God, I just had this up too. Don't you hate it when you have something on your mind and then you just lose it? Yep. And that's why we Every have notes. Nah, notes are for, for squares. We don't talk about notes. But I am a square. I mean, I can, I can go ahead because I have one in mind as well. By all means, tell us. Yeah, sure. So the, the match that I think is the most important is the APM Aussie Pain Merchants versus Overpowered Wild Leaderboard. Now, this isn't as important necessarily for Aussie Pain Merchants because they've really secured uh, that top two spot in the Brown Conference. Like, them and everyone's a winner have a, have a big gap over Nofin and Pog. But it's so important because of, of how many points uh, outcome can, you know, manage to take. Uh... <laughs> Because, again, like we were talking about earlier, going over the standings, Al is basically, like, the threshold for how many wildcard slots the Brown Conference is going to be able to take. Because if they're in front of both uh, Pog Merchants and Nofin, the race just becomes all about that direct matchup. 
And so it sort of just has these big ramifications where Owl by themselves in a different conference can completely lock out at least one of Nofin or Pog. Um, and so that's sort of like the big inter-conference uh, race going on right now. So yeah, Aussie Pay Merchants, incredibly good team. Super, super great. But Owl took a great win over Hair Club last week. And so we'll see if they can do it again against a, uh, a very high-ranked opponent. Nope, I'd like I was to... actually going to... Oh, oh, go ahead, Seth. No, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'd like to piggyback off that just a little bit. So I know the question is which match, but I think there's quite a few that have big ramifications, especially for my team and Tom's team. Those point gaps that Corbett was just talking about are very important. And obviously, as the captain, I've been watching very closely. But not only is the... Um, owl match important f2l versus meta jewelers is also mm -hmm. very important and maybe i'm just flattering them because they're my co-casters but <laughs> i'd really like to see them take a big win like they did over us and maybe give us another shot at that point gap in case we happen to miss the three seed yeah, yeah i'm completely i'm completely biased but Obviously, the most influential map uh, match for me is my own match, right? So, I I cannot come up with a better answer because uh, I think we we are really close to making playoffs, and just like last uh, season, I think that our team making it to playoffs is a really interesting thing. Even wow. though our whole uh, lineup has changed. Well, I'm going to go and shout out a matchup that no one else has mentioned. And that is Air Club versus Mad Scientists. So this one is important for similar reasons to the Owl versus APM match that Corb mentioned before. But I believe Mad Scientist has a slightly harder opponent in Hair Club. And even though there were a few points ahead of Owl, it means they'll have a much harder time getting points against their opponents. And that could have huge implications, not only just on them, but as hair, on Hair Club as well. Because while Hair Club is way ahead, their seeding can very easily change based on this matchup, and it can be leapfrogged by quite a few teams already. So depending on which way this match goes, it may not affect so much who makes it into playoffs, but it has a massive implication on seeding. And so this can change a lot of things for a lot of different teams, including those at the top. Yeah, so we all gave a different answer, and I think we're all, like, fine and, like, corrected our own way, which really just speaks to how tight of a race this really is, you know? There's a lot of matchups going on that drastically affect things, whether you're looking at that interconference points or those top three slots. Uh, I mean, this is going to be really, really tight as we, we see how the week progresses. Yeah. I yeah, can allude definitely. to that myself. We have definitely a lot of refreshing of on Seth's... Uh, yeah, I was going to say a lot of refreshing uh, on Seth's tabs here on the Team Elf Legends, uh, you know, leaderboard or whatever, team standings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we have three matches today. One was played this morning and two more going on tonight. And I'm a ball of nerves. I'll be really honest <laughs> because we really need a big showing. We have struggled a lot this season. Nerves, being new, bad lineups. Just We've had a lot of issues trying to hold down that third seed. And, you know, I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and I'm either going to be very, very happy or very, very disappointed because these three matches tonight are pretty critical to our playoff race chances. Yeah, WTF getting to play the role of upset this week if they can pull it off. So you can imagine they're looking forward to it if they can do it. But overall, best of luck to everyone. This is going to be really interesting. This is one of the closest playoff races we've had in a long time in Wild. It's really exciting. It, I'm just happy that we, we have this discussion now. And I'm looking forward to having a similar discussion uh, in EU next week so 
Any final words from everyone? Tom, we'll start with you. Not much. I hope everyone gives their best this week before playoffs. And I'm hoping to see an even closer uh, finisher. Like, I, I wish we could all get there, but it's not possible. So, I don't know, one point away, you know? Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes. Corb, any final words from you? Um, I'm looking forward to trying to win this week and Greg to get me off uh, as much as I can. That's pretty much it. We're all looking forward. Mm. We're all looking forward to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Seth, any final words? Uh, just thanks for having me on and hopefully next week, whether I'm on the show or not, my team will be in playoffs. Tom, as much as I really like to play with you, I'd really hate to see you take that three seed from us. <laughs> I'm going to beat you with Ignite Mage, boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> you oh. better ban it. Let's hope we can get to that point, because I would really want to see that on stream. Speaking of which, if you guys want to have your match on stream, we're always looking for matches. Hit up Lotus, me, Saku, you know, the usual people. I'm not going to list them all because uh, I'm going to sound like a broken record. And that's other people's jobs, like Rod Mexico's. He already does it on Hearth Center. Other people do it on other shows. Uh, let them do it. Uh, we do our own thing here. So just look them up, find the guys to ask, and they'll set you up at the time. Great. Thanks again, everyone, for coming here. Thanks to everyone who watched. Thank you, Lotus, for operating. This was so much better with an operator. And I know you had to shift some things around because we had a last minute special guest. Thanks for making it work. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, yeah, with that, that'll wrap it up. So we will see you guys next week. Best of luck to everyone getting into playoffs. We hope you enjoy the show. And we will see you next Thursday. Good night. Take care. See you. Good night.